Today, I hope to answer one of the most frequently asked questions on my channel. So when are you going to put the flow hive on? So I've now officially been a beekeeper for two full years. I'm going into my third season now in spring of 2018. Uh, I bought this flow hive in February of 2015, the day it went on sale on the Indiegogo campaign that they started off to, to make this thing a reality. So I got this in 2016, and that's when I started beekeeping. However, I've still not used the flow hive. I've still not used the frames. They've never been installed. They've never, they've never been used. They are brand new, untouched. This video, I hope to explain why that is, and I hope to get into whether or not I think I'm going to use them and whether I think I even can use them in my situation. And by watching this video, maybe you will be able to decide whether this system is right for you. Now, I'm not going to say anything negative about Flowhive, about the company, about the concept, about the construction, the, the whole system, because I don't have anything negative to say about it. But I am going to give you my honest thoughts on whether or not this is a viable solution for everybody. So let me just start off by saying why I bought this. I had been thinking about getting into beekeeping for a number of years. I have friends who are beekeepers and I wanted to do it. I wanted to get into it, but I just didn't know the first step. This thing came across my radar uh, just about a week before the Indiegogo campaign launched and I was reading about it in the news. I started seeing their videos and it looked very appealing to just slap down 700 bucks and become a beekeeper. Basically just get everything you needed to start beekeeping. Honestly, I didn't do a lot of research into becoming a beekeeper before I bought this, but I knew it was a year before I would actually get the bees and get the flow hive. So we just jumped into it. So we ordered this 2015. I spent 2015 learning as much as I could about beekeeping. Flow hive arrived early 2016. I got my bees May of 2016. So I'll admit I was a bit naive going into it that way, but I had every intention on following through and being a beekeeper. It wasn't like I bought this to just put it in the backyard and forget about it. I definitely wanted to be a beekeeper when I bought this. And I think that's clear if you've watched any of my videos. Uh, I'm, I'm into it now. I feel like, you know, this is going to be something I do for a long time, if not forever. But the day I dropped the bees into my very first hive, I really did not know what I was doing. Now, before I get into our conundrum and the reason why I have not used the flow frames yet, let me just give you a little backstory on our location and our situation. So to set the stage here, we are in Massachusetts, zone 5AB. We're kind of on the line. We're at 1,200 feet elevation. We have long, cold winters and maybe about a five month beekeeping season. All right, so these are the months that we have to work with. Month of January, no beekeeping. February, no beekeeping. March, no beekeeping. April, we might have bees flying. We might have a queen who is thinking about laying some brood. We also may be having blizzards. April is a month when uh, we have freezing nights, we have some warm days, uh, we might have some dandelions at the end of the month, uh, but basically there's, there's like the beginning of a mini flow in April here. In May, we definitely have a lot of activity, a lot of flowers blooming, all the fruit trees are open. So this is the first real month of, of beekeeping here in Massachusetts. June comes and we have lots of lots of brood. July and August, we have the dearth. There's not a lot of nectar here in our immediate location. September, we have a huge flow of goldenrod. October, it's winding down and the bees are going to bed. November, we have snow. And December, no, no beekeeping. So the only time of the year when there's nectar flowing and bees making honey maybe a little bit of June and a little bit of September, October. These are the key nectar months right there. That's when we have a flow. That's when we have honey being produced by the bees. 
Now, the flow hive was produced and invented and developed in a place where they don't really have a lot of winter. The location in Australia where the flow hive people live, uh, they're able to keep their flow frames on their flow hives pretty much year round. They don't really have a winter season. Maybe they have a little lull. This system works great when the bees have many, many months, if not every month, to just constantly be making honey, bringing in nectar, making honey. Now that is pretty much the opposite of what we have here in Massachusetts. I mean, we have six solid months where the bees are in bed. They need to be clustered, they need to be wrapped, insulated. Uh, there, there's no flowers, they're not producing anything, they're just trying to survive the cold. During those months, you don't want to have your flow frames on your hive. So in a northern climate, you're going to take these things right off of the hive and empty them and, and take them in for the year. Now, when I got the flow hive, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to leave these on for the winter. Now, what I thought I was going to do, the original plan, was to give the bees a brood box, give the bees a second super for honey storage and brood if they wanted, then I would add the flow, then I would add the flow box on top. In my mind, I figured the bees would, would have this whole thing full of honey. I would be harvesting my honey from the flow box, you know, roughly September, October, take the whole top box off and then leave them with this for the winter. That was my original plan. What happened my first year was my first year bees didn't have this box full, the bottom box full, until June, July. Uh, then we were in, in the midst of our dearth where there's, there's not much going on. Now, I didn't add my second box until, you know, August, September, and they, they filled that right up when we had our fall flow here of the goldenrod. And there was no way I was going to get the flow box on top because they were just barely filling their second super, which I knew they needed to get through the winter. So the flow hive did not go on that year at all. So they went into the winter very strong and I expected them to come out of the winter, you know, with a decent population and I would be able to build it up faster and get the flow box on last summer. What happened was this hive, my strongest hive, did not make it through the winter. They died. However, I did have a second hive going into that winter. It was a weaker hive, it was a small hive, and it was two medium boxes going into that winter. A very tiny cluster survived, and you may know that hive now as Queen Balboa's hive. So this hive made it until the spring of 2017, but the cluster was teeny tiny. There was, there was nothing there, and it took them all the way up until July before this had any population. There was hardly any bees in there, in May and June, they didn't build up until July of, of last year. They wound up being great. I got three medium boxes filled with honey and filled with bees, and they are now currently alive. All right, so now we're going into my third season. Where are we now? We have the Balboa Hive, and we have Russian Hive right. A double deep, probably a small cluster up here of Russian bees. And we have Queen Balboa, which is a very good size cluster right there. This is my strongest hive. I know that this hive is going to lose bees in the next couple of months because this is the hardest time of year for the bees. They've made it through the winter, but now they're all active. We have warmer days, cold, cold nights. They're clustering at night. During the day, they're trying to fly, but we're not going to have any flowers for a good seven weeks here. So they have to survive, There's, we're gonna have some losses. So remember for us, we only have, we have a small sort of May, June flow and we have a very strong fall flow. So this is the conundrum. When do I put the flow frames on my hives? Knowing the size of the cluster that comes out of the winter here, which is on the small side, if not tiny side, and the size of the flow here, which is not massive, uh, I can't put these frames in a hive and expect this tiny cluster to fill up six flow frames during that time of year. It just, I don't, I don't see it happening. 
The other time of year I could put the flow frames in would be in the fall, and they'd probably fill right up in the fall. The problem with that is that's when I want my bees harvesting honey for themselves to get through the winter. I need them to have resources so they can survive. So I don't want to put flow frames on the hive here unless they have, you know, a f two full supers and the flow is just beginning, then I could put a, a flow box on top of that. That's if these are already full. I still have the goal of letting them fill up their supers for the winter, let them get settled with all the honey they need, then put the flow box on top for honey that I could take. That, that's, that was my original thought, that's what I would want to do here. We don't have the situation that they have in Australia where they can just leave these on at all times, take a frame or so at a time, and leave the rest for the bees and know that they're going to be fine for the winter if they have a winter. The bees need six months worth of honey to get through our winter. I've been through two seasons of bees and I know that there is a dearth in July and August. Now if we have a magical year where there's suddenly no dearth and the bees are collecting honey and they fill up two boxes full and then September still hasn't hit, then I would definitely put these on for the, for the fall goldenrod flow and get some honey out of that. If we, finish, if we came out of the winter and had a massive cluster, if, in April, and we had like an early spring, lots of flowers, maybe I'd throw on a flow box there just on top of a single deep super and let them fill it up and then take it off for the summer, probably feed to get them through a dearth if they needed it, and then let them harvest in the fall. So. My only real option is if this magically is a really good summer, I could take a little flow off in the September, or if I get a magical great giant cluster in April and we have a great flow in the spring. Those are the only two times I'm gonna use the flow frames. And in two years now, uh, it just hasn't happened. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm in a weird spot. I've got this technology, I've got this stuff here, and I just don't think it's gonna work for me. I don't think it's gonna work in my situation. I don't know how many people are in my situation where they just, they can't, they, they have this crazy midsummer dearth. So I live in a rural area, but it's not a heavy farming area. There's a lot of woods around here. So there's not a lot of fields of, of, uh, of canola and buckwheat for the bees to just go and forage on. Um, they're, they're looking for wildflowers, you know, in the, the old meadows and stuff. And it's just, it's just not very heavy in J July and August. So, is the flow hive right for you? Should you buy one? I'm not going to tell you that because I don't know your situation. But these are some things to think about before you go and spend the money on a flow hive. If you live in a warm climate that does not have much of a winter, if you live in a place that has lots of flowers, if you live next to a farm, if you live in a place where there is a continuous nectar flow for the year or for a really long chunk of the summer, uh, then yeah, maybe this is a great system for you. If you live in a place like Massachusetts or Canada or Alaska or Northern Europe uh, where you have a very long winter, where you're not going to be able to leave your flow frames on for the cold months, if you have a very short season, if you lose bees over the winter and you start off the year with a small cluster, if you know you have definite nectar dearths at times during your summertime, uh, you're going to be very frustrated with the flow hive. Is the flow hive right for me? I'm not going to get rid of this. I'm not going to sell it. I'm not giving it, giving up on it. I would like to see how it works. And I kind of, uh, you know, I'm inspired to make it happen. But I'm also very realistic about it. I'm still trying to figure out how to be a beekeeper. I'm still trying to figure out how to get my bees through the winter and get them strong in the springtime so they can hit that spring flow. So I'm not giving up on this. You know, I have hope. I want to see this work. Uh, I'm going to try my hardest to make it work. Now, I don't want to say anything negative about FlowHive, about the flow system, about the invention, about the creators of it, about the company, because I don't really have anything bad to say about the technology or anything. 
it just isn't really working for me because of my climate, not because of the system. Also, I know a lot of people who are very, very happy with their flow systems. For me, it's turned out to be kind of a frustrating thing, but it's not because of the flow hive. So if you think you might be in a situation where you're on the fence and you're not sure, like I was three years ago where you want to get into beekeeping, you're not sure if this is gonna work for you. The flow hive is expensive. It's more expensive than a traditional hive. So when all is said and done, the amount you spend on a flow hive plus bees is the same that you would spend on, say, two traditional Langstroth hives plus two packages of bees. So you could have two hives to start instead of just one flow hive. If I could go back and do it all over again knowing what I know now, I would have taken the money I spent on this and bought two hives and started with two packages of bees. I highly suggest if you're getting into beekeeping, starting off your first year with two hives, not one hive. That's kind of a whole other topic I've gotten into on another video, which I'll link up here, the Q&A video I did. So I want to remind you that even if you get the flow hive, uh, or if you have a traditional hive, you still have to learn to be a beekeeper. You're still going to have to be a Langstroth beekeeper before you get to put on the flow super and harvest any honey. So if you have the money to invest in the flow system and you're not sure your climate is going to work for you, I would suggest getting into beekeeping with two hives, learning beekeeping, finding out if this is really going to work for you, and then you can always buy this after and just drop this on top of your traditional Langstroth hive. If you have eight frame Langstroth hive, this just drops right on top of it and becomes your super for your Langstroth beehive. So you can still, you know, get into the flow hive, but you don't have to buy it up front and, you know, then learn and maybe have it not work for you, kind of like what happened to me. So again, I have no hate for the Flow Hive. I have no negative things to say about the company. I hope that th this didn't come across in any way as me saying, don't get a Flow Hive, because that's not what I'm saying here. I'm saying, look at your situation, think about these things, which I did not think about before I bought it. And I haven't seen any other videos like this explaining this situation as a reason to or to not get a Flow Hive. There's no way I would have known all this stuff before I bought a flow hive. I'm not trying to tell you how to be a beekeeper. I'm not telling you to buy or don't buy. I'm telling you what I've learned and what I would have told myself before I got into beekeeping, if that makes sense. I also hope this video doesn't discourage anyone from getting into beekeeping because it's totally amazing. It's really not that scary and there's so many resources right now online and videos online to really get you into beekeeping, to get you started. If, if you have that, that inclination, go for it because it's just unbelievable. So if you have any thoughts on my conundrum, my situation, and what you think I could do or should do with my flow frames, how I could make use of them, please comment below. If you have any thoughts about the content of the video, uh, I'd also love to hear your thoughts on that. And uh, please subscribe to the channel. I'd love for you guys to stick around. And as always, I appreciate you watching if you made it this far. Thanks so much. Have a great day.